Hey, Facebook. Welcome to the 60 minute live yoga class. We're going to be doing a nice uh, full body flow that's following your breath. Definitely a little bit of chance to get some strength and uh, maybe even a little bit of sweat on. I'm going to work out. This is really going to be a chance to dive into your body, jump out of your head, uh, and get into your breath a little bit. So modify as you need to, step things up as you need to. This is your class. Make it your own. I'm using a Tada rug back here. It's an awesome oversized yoga mat that makes a perfect at-home yoga studio. If you choose to get a Tada rug, you can get 10% off using the code Phoebe. Have some water nearby. Put on your favorite playlist so you can uh, rock to some beats if you like that during your yoga flow tonight. Other than that, just enjoy this practice and make it what's best for your body. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. So come on to your mat. Now we'll start in a seated position. Whatever is comfortable for you, whether it's legs outstretched or legs bent in. Once you arrive in seated, let your hands fall into your lap. Have your eyes open or closed, your choice. And see if you can drop out of your head and into your body. Bring awareness to how your breathing is happening through the nose or mouth. Awareness to which is longer, your inhale or your exhale. Become aware of what muscles you could soften yet still remain seated. Visualizing your muscles hanging from your bones like clothes on a clothes hanger. As your sits bones ground down, lengthen up the back of your spine, lifting the roof of your mouth, reaching through the crown of your head. Take a giant breath in through your nose. Hold at the top. Mouth open, let it go. We'll do two more like that. Big breath in through your nose. Take another sip. Hold it. Mouth open, exhale, long breath out. Through your nose last time, breathe in. Holding it. And open mouth, let it go. Eyes can stay closed or open. You'll bring your fingers along your sides. Fingertips resting down, arms straight. Drop your left ear over to your left shoulder. You can stay there or bring your left hand up to grab the right side of your head gently, drawing your ear a little bit closer to your shoulder. Return back to center, switch sides. The hand that's staying extended, you can really walk it away from you. you kind of push the fingertips into the ground to help find a little bit more length. Dropping the left shoulder down as your right ear draws towards the right shoulder. Return back to center, bring hands to your knees. Take some shoulder shrugs. They might turn into circles or a little bit of a shoulder shimmy. Just get some movement in the shoulder joint. If you're going one direction, switch it. Try the other. 
And just like your ribs are a typewriter, if you remember what a typewriter is, you're going to slide the ribs to the left, back through center, and slide them to the right. You're just going to keep going side to side, keeping your chest lifted, the roof of your mouth lifted, and your shoulders soft. This is really good to help open up the sides of the body as well as strengthen the sides of the body. Great to create some space between the ribs. Stop once you're in the center and move forward and back. So chest forward, chest back. Just like that same kind of typewriter motion, but this time forward and back rather than side to side. Trying to just move the ribs and holding the legs and the spine still. It might feel a little challenging. Let's try it out. Next time you're in center, hold there. We're going to connect these. We'll go to the left, to the front, to the right, and to the back. Making a little bit of a square-like shape. I'm trying to make the square as big as you can. If it feels comfortable, smooth out the edges and turn it into a big circle. Rotating your ribs or drawing a circle with your ribs around your pelvis, your pelvis, your tailbone. It's kind of like the center point of that circle. And you can use your hands on your knees as you need to for stability. Next time you're at the back, stop there and sit up tall. We'll take those side to side motions with the rib cage again, those typewriters. Might feel your sides starting to get a little fatigued as you really crunch those muscles in to move your ribs. And stop and go forward and back, forward and back. Can you breathe a little bit more fluidly? Can you let your breath become a part of the practice? The next time you're in center, stay there. We'll go to the right, front, left, back. Making that big square to start. There's that Tucson train. And then smoothing it out into a circle. Head and neck are relaxed. Um, come back to center. Bring your left hand down. Reach your right hand up. Side bend up and over towards your left. Use the left hand on the ground to really push your ribs back the way you came. Heart and belly faces directly forward. Shoulders away from ears. Inhale, return back to center. Switch sides. Side bend towards your right. Softening your jaw. Really ground the left hip down into the floor. Return back to center. Bring your hands in front of your shins. And walk forward as much as feels comfortable. Push into the palms. Keep the elbows lifted. Draw the belly and the tailbone away from your heart as your heart reaches forward. Then walk your hands over to the right, finding a little bit of a side bend. Push more strongly into the right palm. I'm sorry, into your left palm. Walk your hands back through center and up and over to your left. Pushing more strongly now through the right palm. Both its bones firmly planted on the ground. Walk your hands back through center and come up to a seated position. Nice. Come into tabletop, which is hands and knees. Arriving with knees under hips, spread your fingers wide and begin some cats and cows. Inhale, lifting heart and tailbone. Exhales, rounding. Press your toenails into the floor, especially your pinky toenail. And just like you did seated a moment ago, see if you can make this a circle with your rib cage. So you're going to go to the right, the front, the left, the back, and that same motion with your ribs. Getting all that tension and stickiness out of the torso in reverse direction. Now start to breathe really deep as you do this.
Good. Come back to a tabletop position. Sit back to child's pose. Hips onto your heels. Forehead to the ground. Take three big breaths. Inhale through the nose. Exhale up the mouth. Bigger breath in. Let it go. Last time, biggest yet. Exhale. Rise up to tabletop. Tuck your toes under so your feet are flexed. Round your back into cat pose. Lift your hips, downward dog. Pedal out your feet. Shake out your head. Reaching heels towards the ground. It's okay if they don't touch. Look for a long, flat back, long, straight spine. It's totally okay to have your knees bent. Lift up onto tiptoes, drop both heels to the right. Bend your right knee deeply and roll your left hip up and over on top of your right hip. Turn back to center, toes up. Drop both heels to the left, bend your left knee. Rolling right hip on top. Push strong through your palms, keep reaching your heart forward. Return back to downward dog. Inhale, rise to tiptoes. Exhale, lower the heels. We're gonna do this nine more times, getting some Ankle strength and calf strength. Eight more. Push down into your fingertips, down into your knuckles. Think of your inner thighs squeezing together and your ankles pressing apart. Good. Take one more. Shift forward, tabletop, drop your knees. Walk your hands forward for puppy pose, lowering your chest towards the ground and either your chin or your forehead to the floor. Push down strongly through your palms and through your forearms as if you're trying to push the floor away from you. Then hug your armpits back towards your pelvis as your heart reaches forward. Look forward, shift onto your belly and your forearms, finding a sphinx pose. Stretch your legs back. Make sure elbows are underneath shoulders. Fingers spread wide. Bend your right knee and turn and look over your right shoulder towards that right knee. Check that your knees are hip distance apart while you're at it. Drop the right knee. Switch sides. Bend the left. Look over the left shoulder. If you feel any discomfort in your lower back, push your pubic bone down strongly. We're going to do this a few more times, bending and turning the gaze. Pubic bone pressing down, heart reaching forward. Good, one more to the right and to the left. Nice. Separate your feet and legs more than hip distance. Lower down to your torso and walk your hands under shoulders and then out to the sides about four inches. Look forward and inhale, lift the head, lift the shoulders, lift the ribs, push the pubic bone down. Without moving your arms, think of dragging your legs forward, trying to slide your legs forward through your palms. Draw the ribs in, drop the shoulders down, reach the heart forward, stretch back through your inner ankles. One more big breath. Exhale, lower. Bring hands under shoulders, press up to tabletop, elbows squeezing in, tuck toes, downward dog. Look forward, tiptoe or hop, feet to meet your hands. Clasp opposite elbows and let your torso swing side to side. Head hanging heavy, let the back of your neck be long. Hands release the floor underneath shoulders, bend your knees and then press them towards straight. We'll do this a few more times, bending and straightening, keeping the arms soft, keeping the torso soft, so your legs might not totally straighten. That is okay. Do whatever you need to to keep your hands on the ground. Next time your legs are somewhere between bent and straight, keep them there. You can release your hands at your lower back. Stretch your knuckles up and over the crown of your head. 
you need more stretch, press your palms together. Watch out for hyperextending elbows. Have a micro bend. And if it feels good, you can shift weight from your heels to your toes a few times. And then find the place where the weight is equal between the two. Release your hands down to the ground. Bring them to your shins. Lift your chest. Lengthen the back of your neck. Legs might be straight or they might be bent. Exhale, lower to the forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Feel free to stay with hands on shins or reach biceps by ears. Palms face one another. Press your heels down. Reach your heart forward. Take a big breath in. Exhale, fold. One more time. Inhale, halfway lift. Hands on shins. Stay or arms sweep forward. Good. Three, two, and one. Forward fold. Step your feet together. Squeeze ankles and knees in and rise up to chair pose. Really shift the knees back. Shift the shins back. Push the heels down. Open the heart. Inhale, stand up. Hands go high to the sky. Exhale, interlace them at your lower back. Interlace in the awkward way. Inhale to lift your chest. Exhale, fold forward. Arms going up and over. Release your hands down. Separate feet hip distance. Bend your left knee. Bring your left hand to the floor under your chest and reach your right hand high to the sky. Stay there or wrap your right hand behind your lower back, maybe even grabbing onto your left thigh. Draw the right hip back. You can have a micro bend in it or press it towards straight. Heart is lifting. Reach the right hand back up to the sky if you bound it. And then exhale, fold forward. Bend the right knee. Bring the right hand under the chest. Reach your left hand high to the sky. Left hip is really drawing back. And the left hand maybe sweeps around behind the lower back, grabbing onto the right thigh. Lengthen through your spine like you have a broom handle along your spine, and it's pulling in two directions. The bottom hand on the ground, really screw it into the floor, externally rotating that arm. Push down through both heels. Left arm reaches high to the sky, and exhale, fold forward. Hands under shoulders, step your feet wider, turn your toes out, your heels in. And then bring your hands up to your uh, thighs or up to your knees. Keep your heels on the ground. If you can keep your heels to the ground and go lower, then by all means go for it. But it's not a necessity. Push your heels firmly into the floor and lift your chest. Drop your shoulders. Use the muscles of your legs to push your knees outward and to lift your heart. Stay here, or I invite you to interlace your hands at the back of your head. Make sure it's your head, not your neck. And round your torso, moving your elbows forward and thinking like you're going to touch your tailbone with your forehead. Knees still pushing open, heels still pressing down. Take three more breaths. Two. One more inhale. Open mouth, exhale. Inhale back up if you lowered. Then without using hands, of course, use them if you need to, press your heels down, stand up. We're going to do that three more times. Lower down and stand up. Two more. Stay up. Step your feet together, hip distance apart. Reach your hands high to the sky. Interlace your fingers. Interlace your or press your palms together and release first finger and thumb. So side bend up and over towards your left. Belly turning towards the sky. Squeeze inner thighs inward. Press ankles outward. Inhale back up to center. Side bend up and over to your right. Press your legs firmly down into the ground to grow taller. Inhale back up to center. Exhale, fold forward. 
Inhale, halfway lift, chest goes towards the sky, bend your knees, plant your hands, and step back into a plank pose. So anytime we're in plank pose, feel free to drop your knees down to the ground. Your arms hyperextend, put a micro bend in them. Squeeze inner thighs together fiercely. Back of the neck is long. Heart reaching forward through your shoulders. Good, for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Press back to downward dog. Find your breath. Reach your right leg head to the sky. Inhale. Exhale, step right foot between thumbs. Good. Rise up to fingertips. Inhale to lift the heart. Then exhale, press your front leg towards straight. Lift the heel of your back foot up really high to the sky. So you're pointing your back foot. And inhale, back to that runner's lunge. Fingertips down, heart reaching forward. Exhale, press it towards straight, using the heel to push down to help straighten. Inhale, heart forward. Exhale, press back. We'll take one more. This time, stay with the front knee bent. Good. Inhale up to a high lunge. If you need hands down, keep them down. In this high lunge, we've got front knee over the ankle. We've got strength in our back leg. The back knee can always drop to the floor. And you can stay right here or add on. Hands coming to your heart, thumbs at your chest. Open your arms to a T or cactus arms if you have don't have the room. And then twist towards your right. Okay, right here, this is already a lot of work happening in the core, work happening in the legs. If you want to add on a bit further, you can bend your front elbow, hook it outside the right knee, bring your palms together, and push your palms into one another to help turn the belly and the mid-back. Keeping the pelvis facing downward, the twist happens in your spine. Nice. Look down, bring both hands to the ground, and again, push that front leg towards straight, forward folding, connecting head down towards the shin, back heel lifting high up towards the sky. Kick your feet into the ground. Inhale, bend the front knee. Nice, big step forward, both feet together. Knees bend, rise up to chair pose. Notice if your mind goes to complaining, stay with your breath. Inhale, stand up, reach up. Exhale, flat back to fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, bend knees, plant palms, step back. Find a plank pose. Plank is so great because it works the entire body, but if you hate it, just go straight to down dog. Nothing wrong with that. Fingers spread wide, press the fingertips down. Without moving your arms, push your hands outward away from one another. And then without moving them, simultaneously draw them towards the top of your feet. Okay, downward dog. Lift the hips. Left leg lifts. Look forward. Step through. Foot between thumbs and as many steps as you need. Fingertips down. Reach your heart forward past your front knee as you kick your back leg back. Then exhale, press the front leg towards straight, lift the back heel up, forward fold over that front leg. Look forward, bend the front knee. Exhale, press back, use your breath. Inhale starts, then you move. Exhale starts, then you follow. This time, keep the bend in your front knee, rising up to a high lunge. Again, you can always have fingers down or have your back knee drop down to the floor. We're looking to get our pelvis underneath us rather than stick it out like a duck tail behind us. So if you need to bend your back knee to make that happen, that's totally okay. 
Add on if you'd like by bringing hands down to your heart, opening them out to a T, and twisting towards your left. Notice the twist is happening in the mid-back. Feel free to stay right there working on strength, on balance, or hook right elbow outside your left knee, palms coming together, chest lifting away from your front thigh. Breathe deep in these twists. Full inhales and exhales. Nice. Look down. Bring your hands to the ground. Press your front leg towards straight again. Bend into your front knee. Step forward. Both feet together. Rise up to chair pose. Ah, big breath in. And out. Inhale, stand up. Exhale, flat back, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift, chest up. Bend knees, plant palms. Step back, tabletop pose this time. So knees come down to the ground. Spread fingers wide, reach your heart forward, flex your feet. Toes are going to tuck under. Check that knees are really underneath your hips. Okay. Look forward, round your back, downward dog. Inhale, shift forward, tabletop. Exhale, downward dog. We're going to do this a few more times. If you'd like to make this a little bit more challenging, just hover your knees each time you come to tabletop instead of dropping them down. And if you'd like to make this a little bit easier, just stay in tabletop and you can practice just lifting your knees up for a couple breaths and dropping them back down. Really draw the shoulder blades away from the ears. Using the back muscles rather than your poor wrists or your arms. Okay, I'll take one more. This time we'll stay in downward dog. Breathe in and out. Step right foot between thumbs, drop the back knee down, shift into half split. Keep your back foot, foot flexed and flex your front foot as well. Reach your heart forward as you draw the right hip back towards the back of your mat. Okay, stay here or if it feels good, shift your front heel a little bit further forward as much as you need to feel a safe stretch. So if you shift forward, go ahead and shift back. Bend into your front knee. Lift up your back knee. Fingertips still on the ground. Back heel goes down. Warrior two. Windmill up and open. Big breath in. And out. Straighten your front leg. Shift your hips back. And drop your right hand down for triangle pose. The right hand can land wherever feels comfortable. Toes are soft. Use the ball of your foot and the heel of your foot to press down. Notice your breath. Strengthen your legs. Inhale, rise up. Grab your hips. And step your back foot in and forward just slightly, setting up for pyramid pose. So left foot steps to the left, right foot to the right. Back toes point outward to the left slightly. Torso and hips face forward. Inhale and exhale, fold forward over your front leg. Drawing the right hip back. If your hands need to come down, just bring them down. Otherwise, you can stay holding your hips or interlace your hands together behind the lower back like we did earlier in class. Heart reaches forward. Press the ground away from you with your legs. Nice flat back. Heart lifts. Look forward. Slowly rise up. You're going to turn to the left. Toes out, heels in. Synchro yogi squat. I'm sorry, not yogi squat. Goddess pose. Similar to a yogi squat, but we're higher up. Heels press down. Find the pelvis underneath your shoulders and check that your knees are over your middle toes. So 
you might need to turn your toes more inward or more outward to make that a reality. And then arms come out to the sides, fingers spread wide. Maybe do a little dance here. Maybe you play with those um, typewriter ribs. Just getting into your body, moving around a little bit. Again, dropping out of the head, not thinking about it, not worrying about it. No one can see you on the video, so just move and breathe. And then let that movement take your right elbow down to your knee. Reach your left arm up and over. Knees pressing outward still, hips sinking low. And then return back to center, and we'll do the other side. Good. Just going back and forth a few times. One more each side. Turning back to center, straightening both legs. Look forward, take a big step to the front of your mat. Center the weight onto your left foot and draw your right knee up to your chest. Grab a hold of your right shin. Draw your right knee up to your armpit. Press down strongly to your left leg. And even though your legs are apart, imagine you're squeezing the inner thighs together. Great, drop the right foot down. Have a seat. Don't worry, we're gonna do the other side in a moment. Draw your knees up, finding boat pose. So fingertips can be behind you. Chest lifted, lower back lifted. You can stay right there, squeezing legs together, or bring your arms by your sides. You could also choose to straighten your legs. Nice, soften the shoulders, maybe do a little shoulder shimmy. Woohoo, rocking this boat pose. Lifting the heart, sitting up tall for three, two, one. Lie down all the way onto your back. Draw your right knee into your chest, just like we did standing. Extend the left leg out. By all means, feel free to bring the left foot down and keep that left knee bent. Option to stay holding the right shin or extend the right toes towards the sky and climb up the back of the right leg hand over hand, just like you'd climb a ladder or a rope. Maybe grabbing the thigh, the calf, the ankle, or the foot. Lift your torso up, literally hanging from that leg. Walk your hand back down the leg, lowering your torso, bend the knee, drop back into your chest. Left leg comes in to meet it. Begin to rock forward and back, forward and back. You're going to take as many rocks until you can get all the way up to standing. And if that's like, what? Use your hands, get to standing any way that you need to. Okay, stand back onto the left foot. We're almost to the other side, don't worry. And draw your right knee up to your chest again, but this time keep your hands off of it. So the hands are gonna be by your sides in mountain pose. And you're just gonna have the right knee lifted about hip height, flexing the right foot. You can keep it there or kick the right leg towards straight, maybe even reach the arms overhead for five, four, soften the face, three, two, kick, 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 lift the ankle. Drop it down, mountain pose. If you forgot to breathe, now's a good time to begin again. Inhale, reach the hands up. Exhale, flat back to fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, bend knees, front palms, step back, plank pose. This time lower all the way down to your belly. Inhale for a baby cobra. And exhale into down dog. Notice any differences between your right and left sides. Maybe there isn't any. Left leg lifts up and steps through between your thumbs. Drop the back knee and shift into half splits on this other side. Really reach long through your inner left ankle. At the same time, really draw the outer left hip back. And again, you can stay there or slide your left heel further forward if you need a little bit more sensation. The weight is equal between the right and the left. I like to flex the back foot so I can have a little bit of strength in that back leg. We're not just passively sinking into these stretches. We're always keeping the muscles engaged to safely 
stretch in these. Draw the left leg back in if you extended and bend into the left knee. Fingertips down, lift the back knee up to the sky, spin the back heel down to the ground. Warrior two, windmill the arms up. Confident gaze. Confident breath. Front leg straightens. Hips slide back, triangle pose. Imagine someone is pulling that top wrist up towards the sky. Really lengthen the left side of your ribs, that's the bottom side. And you can gaze wherever is most comfortable for your neck. Inhale, rise all the way back up. Grab your hips, prepping for pyramid pose. Adjust your back foot in and step close enough that you can bring your back heel to the ground. Back toes turn outward slightly, face forward, and exhale, forward fold over your front left leg. Hands can stay on hips, or they can reach down for support to the floor, or again, you can interlace them at your lower back. You can relax your head, letting your neck be long. Look forward, strengthen the leg, slowly rise all the way up. You're gonna turn to the right this time. This time, have feet parallel or even turn your toes inward towards one another slightly. Forward fold, hands will start on hips as you fold forward between legs. Drop the hands down underneath shoulders, and then lower your torso as much as it would like to go. You could even walk your hands through your legs. If it feels nice, you can rock from heel to ball of foot a little bit, and then center as you feel ready. You might grab onto big toes. You might still hold onto your hips and kind of push your hips up to the sky, helping to loosen and lengthen your lower back. Keep your legs strong. Inhale, rise back up to palms. Strengthen your abs as you grab your hips and rise to standing with a flat back. Look to the front of your mat, turn your left toes forward, take a step forward, feet together, mountain pose. Center the weight into your right foot, draw your left knee up to your chest. Grab the shin as you draw your knee to your armpit. A steady breath will create a steady balance. Step down onto both feet, bend your knees, and come to seated however you need to. This is our second boat pose, and the good news is it's also our last boat pose. So fingertips down behind you, lift the chest, lift the lower back. You could always stay right here, or lift the knees, bending them, squeezing legs together. Stay there, or bring arms by sides, palms face up. Stay there or press your legs towards straight, good. If you wanna add on a little bit to this last round, feel free to take a low boat. We're holding for 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, lay all the way down onto your back. The left knee comes into your chest once you arrive. Right knee can be straight or bent in. Start by drawing knee up towards armpit. 
Remembering to breathe. And as you feel ready, extend the left leg up towards the sky. Climb up the back of your leg, hand over hand, grabbing any part of your leg. It doesn't matter how high you get. Soft shoulders, soft jaw. Left hip drawing towards the bottom of your mat. Bend your knee, dropping your torso back down. Bring both knees into your chest. And you can either rock to standing or use your hands, but we're going to meet in standing. Once you arrive in standing, return the weight to your right foot and lift your left knee, but keep your arms by your sides this time. You can remain with the left knee bent. Or reach the arms up, kick the left leg towards straight, take up some space, make an expression, breathe deep, breathe fierce, lifting that lifted ankle for three, two, lift it up, and step down, mountain pose. Inhale, hands up high, the sky, big breath in, exhale, fold forward, inhale, halfway. Exhale, bend knees, plant palms, step or hop to plank pose, lower down to your belly, inhale up, baby cobra, or upward facing dog, exhale, down dog. Half pigeon, right knee forward, right knee comes behind the right palm, and your right foot can stay close to your crotch, or it can kick towards the left palm. Back knee is going to walk away from you as much as you can. You're going to stay with your heart lifted and squeeze your inner thighs together super strongly. So it might even feel like your hips are kind of lifting up and elevating. Finger tips can be down for support, or you can even reach your hands up into the air. Nice. Plant your hands. Step back three like a dog. Right leg lifts up high. Good. Step your right foot forward between your thumbs. Reach your heart forward. And then we're going to do something that everyone's been commenting on. We're going to do a jump switch. So step left foot forward, right leg back. Either as a jump or a step. Yep. Then drop your right knee down. Turn your left toes out. Bring your left hand to your left knee and twist towards your front left leg. And then bend your right knee. Reach your left hand up and back and grab the foot. Now, totally optional. If your hand doesn't grab the foot, no big deal. Just keep the foot down. Don't do any in-betweens. So you want to have one or the other. Go ahead and release that back leg and step up and back three legged dog. Lift your left leg high to the sky. Half pigeon, left knee draws forward, set it down behind the left palm. Walk your right knee way back behind you. Make sure your back knee is pointing towards the floor, your back toenails are on the ground. Using the muscles of your legs and your hips, draw your left hip backwards. And your right hip forward and down. You can stay on fingertips or again you could reach biceps by ears. Do what your body wants, not what your brain thinks it should do. And plant your hands, step up and back, three-legged dog. Left foot goes forward between your thumbs. Rise to fingertips. Here comes that favorite part, jump switch. Drop your back knee down, twist towards the right. 
Again, stay or bend your back leg in. Reach your right hand up and back. Draw your foot towards your hip. Noticing if one side feels tighter or looser. <clears throat> Release your back foot, plant your hands. Step forward, both feet to the front of your mat, tuck your tailbone and slowly roll to standing. Okay, we're gonna go into our final balance. Stand onto your left foot, draw your right knee up to your chest and grab your shin. So we've been here before and this is the starting point. This is a pose and this is where you could remain. If you wanna add on, here's the way to. Reach down, make a basket out of your hands, interlacing fingers and wrap them around your right foot. You could stay right here working on that. If you wanna add on further, Begin to kick the right leg away from you. Maybe keep it bent, maybe straighten it. If you wanna add on further, begin to forward fold over your right leg. Think of touching your elbows together underneath the calf. Then one day bowing your head, reaching your forehead down to your shin. Try and take three breaths. Woo, if you come out, just come back in, it's okay. Two more breaths. And one more breath. Slowly coming out, returning back to standing, ah, and shaking out any tension you might have created. All right, we're going to the other side. Stand onto the right foot. Left knee comes up, grab the shin. Again, stay here or make the basket, scoop underneath. Stay there or kick the left leg away from you. Fold a little or not at all. Slowly release, turn to standing. Inhale, hands go high to the sky. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, halfway lift. Bend your knees, step your left leg way back, coming into that runner's lunge. Drop your left knee down. Shift back half splits. Feel free to stay in half splits like before or slide your right heel further forward, coming closer into a full split. Right hip is drawing back, equal weight between both legs, heart lifting, squeeze the muscles around your leg bones like you're giving them a hug. And engage your abs, return back to downward dog. Step left foot forward, drop your right knee, Shift into half splits. This is a wonderful place to stay. Or add on by shifting the left leg forward as much as you need to feel a sensation. Yoga is often easier for those who are less flexible because they have to do less to feel more. When somebody's really flexible, really bendy, they have to do all these weird things just to feel a stretch and it becomes a lot harder, a lot more of a process. And slowly draw the abs in, draw the front leg in, and step back to downward dog. Look forward, walk or hop to seated. We're gonna lie down onto your back. We did a lot of forward folding, a lot of hamstring opening in today's class. So we're going to take a bridge pose to help strengthen the hamstrings and do a little bit um, to counter all that forward folding. Arms by sides, knees bend, feet come to the ground. Push down into your feet, engage your lower belly and roll your hips up to bridge. Take a peek at your pelvis, make sure your pubic bone is higher than your hip bones. Stretch your knees away from you. Push your shoulders down, push your triceps down. 
And take a couple breaths without moving your feet. Think of dragging them towards your chest. Really activating the backs of your legs. Start with your chest and roll it all the way down. We're gonna take one more bridge pose. If you prefer to take a wheel, you're welcome to. If you've never done a wheel before, I don't recommend doing it right now as your first time. Go ahead and take a bridge again. So hands by sides or hands by ears. As you're ready, inhale to lift your hips. Breathing deeply. Lifting the pubic bone. Slowly returning back to your backs. Take your feet wide, but let your knees fall into one, inch, one another. Knees are still bent. Feet are flat on the floor. Let your knees move apart, but keep your feet wide, wider than your yoga mat even, or right on the edges, unless you got a tada rug. And then drop both knees to your right. You can stay just like this or pick your right foot up and put it on top of your left, outer left knee. As your knees move to the right, think of your belly moving to the left. Your arms can come open to a T-like shape or to cactus arms, depending how much room you have. Take another breath in and out here. Try your belly a bit further towards the left and let this move your knees back to your starting point. Scoot your hips slightly to the right and drop both knees to the left, twisting to the other side. Option to stay like this or pick up your left foot and put it on top of your right knee. Remember that right foot is still way off to your right. So we start the twist with really wide feet. And when you drop the knees to the left, the feet stay wide. Knees moving to the left, belly moving to the right. Let your breath really be a part of this. Draw your belly in and lift your knees back up, bringing your feet down to the floor. Take any last movements you need, maybe knees to chest, rocking side to side, maybe a happy baby. If there's anything else you need, of course, take it. 
This is also our time for Shavasana. So as you feel complete with your movements, go ahead and outstretch. <sighs> Let your body just fall into the floor. This is a time to let go of breath control, to let go of expectations for your brain, and to just rest, to let your body absorb everything you just gave it. I encourage you to stay here for at least three minutes, but preferably five to ten, so that you're not interrupted by me and you can stay as long as you'd like. I'm going to sign off now. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Thank you for joining me in this class. Leave a comment after your Shavasana. Let me know how you liked it. Ciao.